Now, this next requirement is one of those things you wish you kind of knew at the beginning of the project or maybe thought harder. It's one of those things that brings in regret where you're all excited at the beginning and you figure you had an idea how to solve it. And then it comes time to solve it. and You're like, oh, dude, I'm in trouble. <laughs> right. Good news is dynamic languages, especially with OOP, make it really easy to do spooky action at a distance. Right. You can do all kinds of dynamic things. And what they want is a bounded capacity. It just means a limit. They don't want to add more than three items or something. So for example, if you look at your history, they want to have a limit of maybe only three. If I go to the fourth page, this item will be popped out and we'll add the brand new item on top. They want to be able to control that limit and they want it at construction, which means that every time you use this data type thereafter, it's kind of built in, the state is internal and it remembers what its capacity is. It's pretty straightforward in OOP because you have state. So the way we can do that is we can create a LIFO queue with some kind of configuration. So let's, let's see how this plays out. Adding three items to a two limit will result in a two limit queue. Say uno dos here, and we need an array add tray. So we have three items, but the array should equal two because we want to set a limit on this guy. And so the way we set a limit, we could probably just, when you create it, it's a constructor argument. And we'll say a limit of two. And so that will guarantee that these two numbers should match because I don't want my queue to exceed two items. So trace and dose should be the only ones in it. Trace should be first. So let's go implement that. By default, a constructor has nothing. We're going to put a limit in there and we'll just default it to infinity. So this supports our existing API because no one else put a limit in there. So we'll just make the assumption. Okay, we assume you want an infinite queue. Just like when you create an array in JavaScript, it's infinite until you run out of memory, right? And we got to store this somewhere. And so the way classes work is you can store things internally in variables. We're going to do a private one because we don't want anybody to mess with this. So we'll just call this limit. And then whatever they pass in the constructor, then we'll just set it to whatever they pass in. Right? By default, it's infinity. So it'll still work for everything else. But if they change it to like two, cool. It's right there, ready to use. We now have to enforce this limit. Let's assume that we've gotten past all these checks. We want to go ahead and verify the limits. We'll say if this limit is infinity, then we're good. <laughs> like there's no problem. We're good to go. Funky code there. So very imperative coding will just stop running everything from this point forward. However, if the limit is a number, then we have to check it. So we're gonna go if this length of our list is greater than the limit, then we have a problem. We got to remove the last item that was added. So we'll say this dot splice and we'll say this dot length minus one. So that'll get the last item that was added. And if we hit save, it should pass. Fantastic.